In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to find the limit of a composite function. So for the first example, we have the inner function x over 3 and the outer function psi. So we're going to evaluate this limit. And for this problem, we could use direct substitution. So we can write psi, and we could put the limit on the inside. The limit as x approaches pi of the expression x over 3. Using direct substitution, we can replace x with pi. So this becomes sine pi over 3. Now pi is equal to 180 degrees. If you divide that by 3, that becomes 60. So this is equivalent to sine of 60 degrees which is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So that's all we need to do for the first example. Now for the next example, we have another composite function. And so what we can do is write it like this. We have the natural log of the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x. Now, cosine of 0, we know it's 1. And as you approach 0 from the right side or 0 from the left side, it will still be 1. Cosine of positive 0 0.01 is approximately positive 1. And cosine of negative 0 0.01, if you type in your calculator, that's still approximately positive 1. So using direct substitution, we get that cosine of 0 is 1. And we know the natural log of 1 is 0. Now, let's work on another example. Let's say we have the limit as x approaches 0, but it's going to be from the right side. And this is going to be of the natural log of x cosine x. Now, this one is going to be a little bit more trickier than the last one, but still doable. So feel free to pause the video and try this example. Now for this problem, what I'd like to do is set y equal to the inner function. So I'm going to make y equal to x cosine x. Now, in order to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the inside function, it's helpful to know what these values are independent of each other. So the limit as x approaches 0 of x, that's going to be 0, but specifically 0 to the right. And the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of cosine, that's going to be 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. Now, if we put these two together, 0 to the right times 1 to get x cosine x, well, this is going to be 0, but specifically 0 to the right, meaning it's going to approach 0 from the right side. So it's going to be approximately, it's going to be above 0, but getting closer to 0. So it's not going to be less than 0, it's going to be above it. If it was less than 0, we'll be approaching 0 from the left. But we don't have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this. We have the limit as well of ln. I'm going to replace this with y. Now, as x approaches 0 from the right, x cosine x, which is y, that is going to approach 0 from the right. So what I'm going to have here is as y approaches 0 from the right, because that's what we have here. As x approaches 0 from the right, we get that y approaches 0 from the right. So now we have to apply that to the outer function, ln. Now we know that ln 1 is equal to 0, and ln 0 does not exist. It's like undefined. But what about ln as we approach 0 from the right? 
as we approach zero from the right, this is going to be negative infinity. If you have your calculator with you, if you were to type in ln of a small number, but just above zero, or to the right of zero, so ln point zero one, this will give you negative 4.6. Now, if you were to type in ln 1 times 10 to negative 30, so that's still above 0, but very close to 0, you would get negative 69. So as you can see, as you get closer and closer to 0, it's becoming more negative. So this is going to be the final answer. It's negative infinity. Now let's work on another example. What is the limit as x approaches i over 2 of this composite function, e raised to the tangent x? Feel free to try that one. So for this problem, I'm going to make y equal to tangent x. Now notice that this is not from the right or from the left side. And for this one, for tangent, it matters. Because tangent 90, it's undefined. And the left side and the right side, they have different values. If we were to take the limit as x approaches pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, from the right side, we would get a different value. And this is for tangent x. We would get a different value compared to if we were to take the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left side. And to confirm this, if you were to type in tan 90 in your calculator, it would be undefined. If you were to plug in tan 91, you would get negative 57.2. 91 is in quadrant 2, and tangent is negative in quadrant 2. But if you were to plug in tan 89 degrees, you would get positive 57.2 because it's positive in quadrant 1. If we were to create a number line, 91 would be equivalent to pi over 2 approaching from the right side. 89 will be equivalent to pi over 2 but approaching from the left. So the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the right side, aka tan 91, that's going to give us negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left side, of tangent x, aka tan 89, that's going to give us positive infinity. So that's what we want to understand from this. So what we're going to have is the limit as y approaches. We're going to have to figure out what goes here. And I'm going to replace tangent with y. So the limit as x approaches pi over 2 for tangent x. Notice that it's different. So what this means is I'm going to have to break this problem into two parts. So let's start with this one. Let's see what it is as we approach from the right. This is going to be e to the y. So as x approaches pi over 2 from the right, tangent x will become negative infinity. So in other words, y approaches negative infinity since y is defined to be tangent x. Now, what is the limit as y approaches negative infinity or e to the y? So this is going to be e to negative infinity, which is the same as 1 over e to infinity. e to the infinity is infinity, and 1 over infinity is 0. Whenever you divide a constant by a very large number, you're going to get a smaller number. So this is going to go to 0. So that's the value for the right-sided limit. 
Now, let's check the value for the left side of the limit. So we can get rid of this. So the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of e tangent x. So as x approaches pi over 2 from the left, tangent is going to go to positive infinity. So we could say that we have the limit as y goes to positive infinity of e, and we'll replace tangent with y. So this becomes e to the infinity, which is infinity. Now, notice that the right side of limit and the left side of limit has two different values. They're not the same. Because they don't equal to each other, because they're not equal to each other, the limit does not exist. So this is going to be the answer. So sometimes you have to be careful when you don't have a one-sided limit. You need to check to see if the right side of limit and the left side of limit, if they lead to the same value. So that's basically it for this video. By the way, for those of you who want more videos on evaluated limits, feel free to check out the links in the description section below.